Nikon D5200 menu settings. There are a lot of menus in the D5200 and there's a lot of settings within those menus. This is the first in the series of videos I'm doing on the menus in the D5200 and I'm starting at the top of the list with the playback menu, don't go away. Hi there, I'm Barry Callister of Barry Callister Photography, founder and creator of PhotographersFreedom.com, giving you the time, gear and skills to be the best photographer you can be. Welcome to my channel, thanks for checking out this video. My YouTube channel here is all about photography tutorials, photography gear reviews, Lightroom and Photoshop tutorials and a whole lot of other photography stuff, all geared towards nature photography, so if that sounds like something you're into, please hit that subscribe button and ding the notification bell. Stick around to the end of the video today because I have a question for you about the D5200. Right now, let's get into the content. So here we are with the D5200 and to get to your menus, what you do is press the menu button up here on the left hand side of your viewfinder and that takes you into the menu screen. Now don't freak out if yours looks different to mine. It will remember the last place that you were at when you're in there. So yours may look different. Now, before I get into the playback menu, which is up here at the top, I'm going to explain how to navigate your menus. So you do that by using your multi-selector over here. So you can go right or left, up or down, and you've got OK to select things in the center there. And the little button to push you select something by pressing OK. At any time to get out of your menu, you can press the menu button again and you'll go back. So scroll upwards to your playback menu and we'll take a look at it. Now that we've navigated to the playback menu, we can go across to the right with our multi-selector and you'll see the first item says delete. Obviously this helps you to delete photos. So if you go across again with your multi-selector, you will see you have three choices. You have selected, date, select date and all. So all is pretty self-explanatory. That will delete all the photos on your SD card. Selected, you can see the arrow over here. This tells you that there's more options over to the right. So if you click over to the right with your multi-selector, you will see the images that are on your SD card. Now what you can do is you can see it's telling you some options down here. It's got the little minus magnification there. So this is your plus and minus magnification buttons over here on the right hand side. So the minus is down the bottom, the plus is above it. So if you press the minus, you can see that has marked this image as being selected for deletion. So you can go through and mark all of those there. And if you press minus again, it will deselect the one that you just selected and you can scroll back to the others and deselect them as well if you want to. You can also zoom in by pressing the plus to take a look at the image. You have to press and hold that if you want to see it because otherwise you can see it just goes back to being a small thumbnail there. And it also tells you a little bit of information about the file, the name of it, the date it was taken and the time it was taken. So you can go through there and select all the photos that you want to delete and then you click OK so we'll, and it will delete them for you. So we'll just select a few here just for an example. I'll just select those three. I'll press OK and it'll say, do you want to delete these three images? I'm going to choose no. So you make sure that the option that you want is lit up. So I'm going to say no because I don't want to delete those. I'll deselect them and we'll go back out of here. To get back out of here at any time, all you do is press the menu button that will take you back to the playback menu and then you can scroll back across. So we'll go back in here, select date. This is obviously selecting images by the date you took them. So on this SD card at the moment, I only have photos that were taken on the 22nd of November 2019 and the 24th of November 2019. So if you want to delete, say, all these ones taken on the 22nd, you go across with your selector switch, press OK and it will ask you if you want to delete them. And you can scroll up and select yes. To deselect them, just press to the right again with your multi-selector. To go back, we'll press the menu button again. And then down the bottom, I said delete all photos. That will delete all the photos on the SD card. The next option we have below delete is playback folder. So just click down 
with your multi selector and you can see this is set to D5200. Now this relates to folders that you set within the shooting menu here. You can see storage folder, it says D5200. If you go across again there you can select your folders, you can create a new one and you can rename them. So the specific folder I've got here on my SD card is called D5200. That's the default name for it. So you can select the current folder or all folders. So if you choose that, it will, if you have other folders, which I don't, it will select other folders for you. So below the playback folder here, what you have is playback display options. This controls what options you have when you're viewing your photos here in the playback area. So if you hit the play button there above your multi-selector, you can view your images. It will normally come up with this as a default. It will just have your image and it'll have some information about the image down the bottom here. But if you press up or down with your multi-selector, you can view other information about your image. So I've got mine set here to show the histogram over here on the right. Down below there, there's information about the white balance as well. If I go down again with my selector, you've got all this information about the photo. So there's the metering mode, the shutter speed, the aperture, the exposure mode, the ISO, the exposure compensation, the focal length, the lens I was using, the autofocus mode, and the VR, whether it was on or off, and all some information down there about your flash mode. If you click down again with your selector, I can get white balance information, color space, picture control, and these other settings there. If I click down again, I've got all these other information here about my noise reduction, my active delighting, my HDR, and any retouching I've done to the photo, and any comments I may have left in there. So if we go back to our menu, this is our playback options. We can set these in here. So you can see I've got here, I've selected RGB histogram and shooting data. So if I go down here to highlights, you click across to select it. Make sure you click OK once you've done that or it will not turn it on. We go back to the play option. If I go down, now we've got this highlights screen. Now this will show you any blown highlights in any of your images. So I'll just scroll through till we find one. So here, those areas of highlights in the background behind that seagull there have been blown out and I've lost detail there. So you can set those options in there. So you've got your highlights. Remember, you go across there to deselect them. Remember to press OK once you've made your choice. So, and if we select overview down here, we'll have a look at that, press OK. And oops, sorry, I'm going back to playback, down and we'll have a look. There's the overview thing there. So this shows you a lot of stuff. It's basically an overview of everything. It's got the image, it's got the histogram, the shooting settings there, your metering mode. There's a general overview of everything in there. So you can have that set on if you want to also, but I just like to choose just the RGB histogram and the shooting data. Below playback display options, we have image review. This controls whether or not your image will pop up on the LCD screen after you've taken a photo. I can't demonstrate that as I don't have a lens on the front of the camera at the moment, but you can go in there and turn that on or off. So this will kind of, this will help you save a little bit of battery power if you're not someone like me who is obsessed with seeing the image straight after they've taken it, you can turn that off and it'll save you a little bit of battery power. Below this we have rotate tall. This is if you are taking images in portrait mode, so with your camera tipped on its side, this will rotate those images so they don't display across ways on their side, they will display as a strip up and down the middle of the screen here in their proper orientation so that you can see them. So you can turn that on or off in there. I leave that off because I don't really enjoy it. A slideshow, this will obviously play a slideshow of anything that's on your SD card and you can select your image type in here. So you can select still images and movies or still images only. So we will press okay and we will select that. And the frame interval is two seconds and you can change that in here to two, three, five, or 10. So we can press okay there, that's fine. And we'll go up to start, press okay, and it will scroll through all these strange images of 
me taking photos for the thumbnail for my lasso tool video I did last week. So, and if you want to stop that, just hit the menu button and it'll go back. Below slideshow, you have DPOF print order. This is something that I have never used and I doubt that you will either. This just allows you to mark images for printing if you're printing them directly from the camera uh, and sending it to a lab, but I don't really, I don't know why you would want to do that. I've never used it and it's grayed out so I can't use it anyway. So there you go, that's video number one in the Nikon D5200 menu settings out of the way. Now you know all about the playback menu and all of the settings inside of it. Now to that question I had for you about the D5200. What do you think of it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? I've been using mine for a long time now and I think it's a great little camera. Let me know in the comments below. Also, if there's anything else that you want to know how to do with the D5200, leave it in the comments below. That's kind of two questions, but anyway. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also subscribe if you want to. Until next time, I'm Barry Callister of Barry Callister Photography and Photographer's Freedom. Get out there, take some wicked shots, and I'll see you soon. Thank you.